word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, or rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. We, the believers of this unique dispensation of the church age, being termed out as Alakani Ketesus, new spiritual species unto Christ, have much to be learned in the completed canon of Scripture which has been given into our hands. And above all, not only given the entire Bible in our hands, we have been given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher as well, who can take care of the congregation when he has been given the true bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church who is none other but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who in return protects him by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and sees that his vocal cords not even once have been used by the Angasha Buddha's demand. Because he is dealing with God's word, and the person who has been given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher will ultimately take care that the way how Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controls, provides, protects him, he is not going to go against the will of God because he has been there with the fear of Jehovah. As long as the fear of Jehovah resides in him, he will, be, he will be directed to the truth of Bible doctrine. The bona fide gift of a pastor teacher makes him to be thoroughly able to stand in the pulpit, provided he has taken number one priority for Bible doctrine and the faithful preparation from the head of the department, which is nothing but by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. This entire mind of Christ, what we are dealing with, what we are writing with, what we are looking with, has an appearance with alignment to our deeds. But the problem today in our Christendom is we do not know what is our appearance, neither we are capable of doing those deeds which can match that appearance which our Lord has given to us as a male believer, the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher. Every believer in this church age is a unique expression of maximum glorification of Christ at the moment of positional sanctification. And many people do not even know what is this positional sanctification. As such, the Roman Catholic doctrines, they want to come back and look and tell that who is a saint, who is a poor saint, and where is the saint certificate you can get at the end of your journey and the man who has given you the baptism is the only key for you to go to heaven because if once that man who has given you the baptism if he's been scanned in the light of the principle of the word of the Lord and if he's not been found eligible then your salvation is gone and even that man is gone that's what the people teach us in the pulpits has not our Lord told faith alone in Christ alone is the ultimate for you at the moment of salvation you have been given and imputed this eternal righteousness forever and given for you eternal life and who are these men they want to speculate and raise guilt consciousness about one's eternal security? These are the men who have come straight from the mind of Satan, apostate teachers, false leaders, who do not know the importance of the power of the word. And it's very pathetic to note that this congregation has been led by such kind of men who are ample to the core, who do not even know to read proper English, and they want to come and stand and think that they can exegete for you the word. I'm not telling a criteria for proper English. But the criteria is preparation, faithful study of the word of the Lord. And even as such, we are weak in Hebrew and Greek. What do we do? We learn daily. Because nothing is impossible by God. Whatsoever the mind of God can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Through us. And we can do it. We are not here to tell XYZ stories. We are not here to tell excuses and lames and alibis. We are here to tell the simple interest of the word of the Lord, dear brethren. That's it. The word, the word, and the word alone. And we don't have any other opportunity. We don't have any other trends. We don't have any other techniques. Because it is not you who are going to work, but it is purely the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is going to work through you to the enlightenment ministry of God so that your appearance could be matching to the deeds. As long as you fail to appear to match the deeds of Lord God Almighty, you are a failure. Not worthy enough to proclaim the truth. Not worthy enough to understand the truth. And that's why many men do not even know what is positional sanctification. Far less they can come and explain to you what will be the experiential sanctification and what is the true godliness and what it is an insult for uh, the indwelling trinity who indwells in you if you're not executing that protocol plan of God. And do you know each and every stage, the problem-solving devices, the plot line designed by R.B. Thieme for us? You may tell that it's not there in the Bible. The principles are there, the divisions are there, the techniques are there. 
And if you want to go look and study those things, first go and study Greek for 10 years, and then have an experience of teaching in 25 years, and then you can come and teach those things. But by faith, we learn. Because at each and every stage of the problem-solving device, we have the importance of the word of the Lord, and Bible doctrine right from the beginning tells. It is not by the bread of food that man survives. It is by each and every word, every word, every word. It is not a vain thing, it is your life, said in the dying declaration of the Deuteronomy by Moses to those people. The same passage, the way how the people failed through Saul. Our Lord tells, obedience to Jehovah is far better than the sacrifices that you're going to give. And in Hosea, my Lord proclaims, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Through Proverbs, the Solomon writes, where there is no proper revelation of the word of the Lord, there the people will perish. And through the psalmist who was going for that funeral dirge, in Psalm 119, the doctrinal passage, he writes, Thy law have hidden in my heart, O Lord, so that I should not sin against thee. He said, the truth of your entire realm is my wealth rather than the good spoil what I can have in this earth. And then furthermore, the Malachi tells the people are destroyed. Why? The lips of the priest should possess knowledge, but the lips of the priest are not possessing knowledge today. And then when we enter into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has been there in the hypostatic union, the blessed years, the earth is blessed because of him, not for us, not for we. The earth, the point where our Lord set the foot. Do you know how great it would be? Man becoming flesh. And I meant to say the entire realm, because heaven and the earth belongs to the Lord. Heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool, and the point of his birth, everything designed, the entire host of angels saluting to the Lord because of his birth. The great feast of Hanukkah, which they perform. Even our Lord said, by growing in grace and in the wisdom, growing in grace and in the wisdom, he grew up. My Lord said, labor not for the food which perishes, but labor for the food which perishes not. My Lord said, my meat is to do Lord's will. No, you not, I am here to do my God's business. What it was, has he not told for you? Have you such the scriptures? Have you understand the scriptures? What was the important scripture, scripture, scriptures? Even in John 16, he tells, when Lord God, the Holy Spirit comes, what is his own work? His entire work is to cause you to investigate the scriptures, search the scriptures. He never looked upon for any other attitude. He never looked upon for any other trends. He said, search the word. Search the word. You make an error in understanding the word. He said, what it is, what it is not. In marriage, or in marriage in the heaven is not been given, everyone will be an angel. And he said, I'm going to prepare the way and I'm going to come back. Do you not think it is feasible for us to quit this earth and go back to heaven? And enjoy there in our mansions, which Lord has provided and kept for us. But how can you stand before that great Lord when the work which has been laid down upon your shoulder as your burden, and you are not doing it, not executing it? At least once have you read Bible upon your knees. And as a pastor teacher, at least once have you written Bible, standing far as you can think, you can get on upon your knees to rule this great people of Jehovah. The importance of the word of the Lord can hardly be estimated from you. Lord has magnified his word above his name. Then what else do you want to ask? Again, the question, the importance of Bible doctrine. The true use of ayah. At each and every stage, what do we find? We do find the great realm and the importance of Bible doctrine. First, the filling of the Holy Spirit through rebound. And then faith was technique, the word, doctrinal orientation, the word, grace orientation, because you know the word and the grace of you have been abounding yourself so that you can cut short all unnecessary things and you go back to the principle of Bible doctrine. And then what? When you enter your personal sense of destiny, number six, what do you have? Your personal sense of destiny, what you are now, where you are now, what gift Lord has given to you. And then further, depending upon that gift, it requires a sound theological basis, an indispensable tool. And then what? You take personal love towards God and impersonal love towards all mankind. Your personal seven and eight. 
if you don't have desire for truth, love for God, incredible stability, your strength of character, your perseverance, your motivation and momentum, how can you have your personal love towards Jehovah? And when you don't have your personal love, how can you love your neighbor as you love thyself? As per the impersonal love in, in the problem solving device number 8. You can't love. They are also doctrinal emphasis. You should have capacity to love your enemy. You should have doctrine in your soul. When our Lord told, vengeance belongs to me, I am going to pay you back. Who are we to take that Lord's matter in our hands? Lord will pay back. We need to wait. Like the Korah rebellion, we have seen the mysterious end of those people where the earth swallowed them up. Lord knows better ways than us how to pay them back the vengeance who are enemies to you. What is your duty? Your duty is to grow up in the word of the Lord and submit that case in the hands of Jehovah. And Lord will take care of it. And then what? After your impersonal love towards all mankind? then you have sharing the happiness of Christ, the Ultima. How can you share the happiness of Christ until and as you believe His Word? How can you believe His Word until and as you have been taught to believe His Word? How can you have been taught to believe His Word until and unless you have a desire to know His Word? Is it possible for you, dear brethren? It's not possible. Be very careful. Until and as we have the Word of the Lord, it's not possible. We cannot share the happiness of Christ. We cannot have that true divine viewpoint against the human viewpoint in our life. And you know how is it? When we go astray against the divine viewpoint, we are concentrating upon the human viewpoint and telling to Lord, Lord, you are not capable of solving my problems. Let me do it. But when you say, Lord, you are the Ultima, you are sharing the happiness of Jehovah because you have known his word to watch patiently and see the deliverance of Jehovah, the salvation of Jehovah. But we, the members of the churches, do not know the importance of doctrine, so we play around with Lord. So, the ultimate of the tenth, occupation with Christ. How can you occupy with Christ? Unless you don't have his thinking, until, until and unless you don't have his mind. So, I do know there will be cults, cults who rise and tell, R.V. Thime teaching is wrong. The heresies of R.V. Thime has been exposed. They do not know the understand our importance of this, the 10 problem solving device which has done to the front line of the soul. Why? Satan allures you not to believe the doctrine. It is there in the word of the Lord for each and every problem solving device what he has kept. The importance behind it is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The importance behind it is to have a load of doctrine. And the importance behind it is the unique spiritual life, the true use of ayah, not upon morality, but upon the virtue. And what it is, dear brother, and you and I have to worry about. Receive it by faith. And start to grow up in Bible doctrine, the only capacity for you to solve all of your problems. Only capacity, Bible doctrine. But what is happening nowadays? The only capacity for the pastor teacher is to look and to calculate and sit. What I'm going to get if I follow Pentecostal cloud? What benefits I have if I follow this morality trends? What benefits I have if I still use the defunct spiritual gifts like miracles and healings? And what benefit do you have? You may have a lot of wealth in this earth. But when you come back to heaven, the eternity, you will have a tough time without having any rewards to show forth. You will be having only the resurrection body to show forth. And you don't even have anything to tell. Do you know why? Because wood and stubble, like your deeds, will be burnt off. The work that you do under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, number one, it causes you to understand the word of the Lord and it will cause you to search the scriptures. And contrary to that, any principle which you follow, it is absolutely anti-Holy Spirit. Against Holy Spirit. And as long as you stay in the against Holy Spirit trends, you'll never come to the enlightenment procedure of understanding the word of the Lord. Never. You may be happy doing those things which the people will be happy to please you. 
But if you are against the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, never will come upon your tongue the word known as exegesis, because exegiomai is being told by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in John 1.18, not by us. And that John 1.18 was being told by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, while he was alive on this earth. The importance of exegesis for you and for me to understand. And you are being a bona fide gifted pastor teacher. Your work is to exegete the word, concentrate upon the truth, and rightly divide the word of the Lord. How can we tell we are doing it without performing the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives? You cannot. But rather you will substitute for the word the best, cheapest things which are being outdated long back after the completion of canon. If today, if I tell to you, come and take in your typewriter and type, will you not laugh? You will say, we have the mobile gadgets in our hand. We have laptops in our laps. We have palm tops in our palms. This is enough. Not even just typing the word now. If you just scratch a screen with a word spelling on it, it will definitely type there. When such kind of a sophisticated technology is available, how do you think I can still go and type along with the cycling of typewriter? Of course, typewriting is required to some extension. that I'm telling professionally for your work. But when you analogy that to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, brethren, whether you believe it or not, some of the gifts which are outdated, the, the pre-canon gifts, are being ruling now again in this church age as they are still into force by the so-called false teachers and apostate leaders who are not concentrating for you all the importance of Bible doctrine. And they are alluring you from the word of the Lord, obscuring from the truth. And it is ample to the core what we are looking around in the churches. They easily want to drive you out from Bible doctrine. That's why the appearances and the deeds of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, if he has given you the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, will be absolutely shown forth by the love that you can show to the congregation by rightly dividing the word of truth through exegesis in the method of isagogical and categorical and exegetical explanation of the word in the dispensing technique of dispensations. Dear brethren, ponder over these things. What is true, you subaya? Ponder over these things why Lord has called for us to show forth as allocated catechesis. Ponder over these things if you are a bona fide gifted pastor, teacher, or only a male believer to exegete the word. So, dear brethren, we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for asking in Christ's name, Father. Amen.